Where, where is Matt right now? Brutally murdered? I certainly hope not. Uh, clearly he's not, because there he is. There are multiple mats in the in the LTA, but uh, my other mats are in seventh grade. All right. Uh, a lot of drawing to do last night. Any questions on the drawing? A couple of you asked me during student advisement. Uh, I showed you. Yeah, 4B. I did not make some All right, let's take a look at that. Uh, yeah, 4B. Yeah. 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 All right, let's let that drop. You told me four? Four B. Four B. So um, you got a sphere, and basically, if you think about the equator of a sphere, the plane goes through that sphere at the equator. Uh, a says, explain why QR, QS, QT are congruent. Well, therefore, they're radii of that sphere. So B says, explain why the intersection of the plane and the sphere is a circle. All right, this is not going to work for online learners, but luckily for me, Hey, here's your sphere, right? The intersection would be of the plane and the sphere through the equator would be that. What's that shape? It's a circle. It's a circle. <laughs> oh, why? Stop, stop, stop. Why would uh, why would it be a circle? Because well, a sphere, no matter uh, it, and by the way. Uh, this is a pretty classic one. It, it turns out that if it didn't go through the, the the equator or the middle part about it or through the center, it would actually make an, an ellipse. You could, if you think about it, if it cut through right here, right, it wouldn't actually make a circle. Right? And what ha what's happening here is the radius is getting larger and larger and larger to its maximum size at the center. So as long as the plane goes to the center, it makes a circle. If it doesn't, it makes a skinnier and skinnier and skinnier uh, uh, ellipse. We haven't talked about ellipse, ellipses yet, but uh, we will eventually. Uh, and if you notice, that's, it's, it uses the word great circle. That's a navigational term. Um, it, uh, they found out very early on uh, with map makers that if you make a map and you literally take your protractor, and if you want to fly from Colorado to Virginia, it looks like we should go zero degrees, right? Because it's straight across. Uh, early navigators found out that the map makers were full of malarkey. I'll choose that word. I don't know. Uh, found out, found out that the maps were wrong. Is that when they tried to follow the maps, they wound up in the wrong spots, and that is because a map is flat, but the Earth is a sphere, and when you flatten out a spherical object, you get distortions in your map. And what they use the word for great circle is the great circle. And sometimes you'll see it on a map, but you'll see curved lines. And those curved lines are describing that particular process. The great circle is the longest distance around the, uh, uh, around the earth. Uh, an example of that would be your uh, lines of uh, latitude. Your lines of latitude go through the North and the South Pole all the way around. And those are called great circles, right? Because they're the largest circle that you can draw on a sphere. Or on the earth, I should say. Okay, so that was that one. Anybody else? Okay. All right, uh, since these were all drawing, I'm going to look at your drawings. All right, so we'll collect that here in just a bit. I need your, once again, with your book of truth out. It is a repeat of yesterday's class where we have a lot of vocabulary. Sorry. A lot of vocabulary. We will do a couple proofs. Okay. Uh, copy down your homework for why are you not clicking clicker? Uh, copy down your homework. Let's see. We have a uh, calendar next. Uh, we will take a pause uh, after 9.4 to do a quick review. Uh, we'll take quiz uh, next Thursday. Here is your homework for tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't need to 
Yeah. Uh, when we were doing student advisement, and I came around and asked questions, and you said there were no questions. Okay, that is when you get a chance to ask questions. I wasn't here yesterday. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he wasn't here. Was it here yesterday? No, Danny was not here. Then why did you try to do your homework without the class? I don't know. Mm. My computer crashed. Um, like the, like the I saw you do your homework. And it said out of range on it. Out of range? Yeah, I think it doesn't work. Like it's not really too connected. His graphics chip and his computer crashed. So, but that's okay. Right. Well, what kind of graphics card do you have, Danny? So, I logged on and I did match. Good time. Danny, you're going to need to go on Microsoft Teams or you're going to need to get with a smart person in this class and copy down all the vocabulary from yesterday in your book of truth. Oh, that's okay. not possible. Do I at least get some? Well, how about a semi smart person in this class? Is that possible? All, all the vocabulary. All right. Yesterday was very vocab. Today will be vocabulary uh, uh, heavy as well, too. All right. Here we go. You need to do your homework, though. Oh, okay. You can't just put a name on a piece of paper and even get credit. All right. Uh, the section is entitled Tangents. And once again, yesterday we got all this new vocabulary, some easy, diameter, no big deal, radius, no big deal. We had the word tangent yesterday. We're going to get it again today. New means, or new, it's going to be applied to new scenarios. Really? Right? Yesterday's tangent was a line that touches a circle in one spot. That was a tangent. Today we get four new of those. All right, so here we go. We haven't done a proof in a while. We haven't done a proof by contradiction in a really long while. That's the first thing we're gonna do. So here's my circle with a tangent. I have a circle, red line M, it's tangent. It says it's a tangent and the point of tangency is at point T. We good? I'm going to now prove that OT is perpendicular to line M. So in other words, if you have a circle and you have a tangent and you draw a radius to that point of tangency, it forms a right angle. That's what I'm about to prove. All right. Do you remember doing proof by contradiction? That's where I'm going. Proof by contradiction, what's the process? Step number one, what do you got to do? Why am I pointing to this? Step number one, for a proof by contradiction, what do we got to do? I contradict this statement right here. So instead of saying that OT is perpendicular to M, we're going to say it ain't perpendicular to M. So proof by contradiction, we say that OT is not perpendicular to M. Okay, here comes the kicker. If OT is not perpendicular to that line, I don't know, maybe it's 80 degrees instead of 90, you can always draw a perpendicular. If this is not 90 degrees, then there exists another line. I don't know, maybe it's that line. I'm, I'm drawing it weird. You got to stay with the logic here. Maybe there's another line somewhere. And that other line must be 90. If this one, OT, is not perpendicular, well, then there's, a, there's some point that's perpendicular. We're going to assume that the one that I just drew is perpendicular. Oh, there's a really nice one. Okay, not freehand. So if OT is not perpendicular to line M, well, then there exists another one that is. I just drew it. I, I could have drawn it on the left side or the right side. It's somewhere. Construction. Okay, by construction. Okay, we just assumed that this is perpendicular. Okay, we're going to reach back in our book of knowledge uh, to triangles. What side of a triangle is always the longest? The hypotenuse. On the triangle that I just drew, where's the hypotenuse now? Mm -hmm. OT, the side that's opposite the 90 degree, is now the longest side. So now we're going to say that OT is the longest side. Okay? So we can claim this right here, that OZ has got to be smaller than OT, because OT is the largest side. It's the side that's opposite the right angle. This is a prop. Do you understand the logic? What did we say right here? So if that is at 90, then there must be somewhere that it is 90. I drew it. Visually, clearly it's not. By the way, 
It's a proof by contradiction. It's not supposed to look right. It's a contradiction, right? Yeah. We just assume that it's not true. It is true, by the way. That's why it looks funky. So if we assume this is 90, we arrive at a contradiction. Therefore, the contradiction can't exist. And, if you, and the contradiction can't be, it looks funky. We got to have a math contradiction. Okay. So uh, if that's 90, then the side opposite is the longest side of the triangle. That means that OZ can't be bigger than OT because it's the side that is not opposite. So OZ has got to be smaller, but that's a problem because the given says that M is a tangent. I'm sorry, is tangent at point T. That makes OT what? If this is a point of tangency, OT is a, it's a radius. Is OZ a radius? No. Notice the Z is what, inside or outside the circle? That's our contradiction. Our contradiction is, wait a minute, Buster. Z isn't even on the circle. It's not even inside the circle. It's outside the circle, right? Therefore, it can't be. There's no possible way. It's not because it looks funky. It's because OZ is not a radius. It's outside. It's got to be longer. And that's our contradiction. That's why we can say, oh, that's full. Of, you're full of malarkey or other bad words, right? Uh, you're full of it, right? There's no way that can happen. Therefore, it must be. That's our contradiction, right? And therefore, we just prove that uh, it is perpendicular, QED. Okay? There's a proof by con This is the power of proof by contradiction. Because otherwise, to prove it's 90 degrees, we got to somehow show that something is equal to 9, 0. And there's no measurements up there. Yeah. It's pretty simple to do with a proof by contradiction. It's not always simple, simply because I use a proof by contradiction. In this case, it was though. All right, write this down, Book of Truth. This is our first theorem in a while, 9.1. It says that if you have a line that's tangent to a circle, their intersection is 90 degrees. So if M, that's line M, is tangent to circle O at point T, and OT and line M are perpendicular to each other. It's a really simple proof. Nothing complicated going on there. If you got a tangent, you got 90 degrees to the radius. We get uh, three theorems today. And they're all really quick. Well, two theorems, one corollary. Who doesn't understand the theorem? You got a point of tangency, you got a radius, 90 degrees, done. Uh, what use, I saw this on your NWEA -E test as well, too. They had this construction. They didn't have a little square right here. You just had to remember, oh, it's a tangent, therefore it's 90 degrees. Nine point one. Got a tangent to a circle, the point of tangency makes a 90 degree angle. Everybody good? Weird vocabulary words today. We're not there yet. We're gonna do uh, the three proofs first, then we'll do vocabulary words. Seth, are you doing this or are you doing your homework? I already did that, I'm just doing okay. further ahead in the Gotcha. You see the corollary? That's what we're doing next. Yes. Okay. All right. Moving on. There is a corollary to this one that doesn't seem like it's a corollary. Here is the construction. Make sure you look at this. This was literally the one that was on the NWEA test. I'm not saying because of uh, the NWEA test, but I see this all the time on state test, SAT, ACT. This is the construction. Hey, you got a point that's not on the circle. You see it? You get two lines that are tangent to the circle. And now he says, sorry, you've seen the corollary. Maybe you have it as well, too. Guess what I'm going to be able to say about PB and PA? They're congruent. Question is why? That's the proof we're about to do. Okay. Um, here's the proof. I believe it's for homework. If you pay attention, I'm giving you the answers. Hey, what did 9 1 just say about tangent lines to circles? So if I draw the radius, what do you know? If I draw the radius, what do you know? Why did I put it right there? Sorry. Tell me why. 
So tell me why. Not similar, but they're actually congruent. Why? Why HL? Yes, he's right. Because they share what? They share the hypotenuse. That's the H of HL. Where's the L? Where's the L? Why? No. Even simpler than that. Oh, the distance from the circle to the center is the same. Why? Because. Yes. Because they're radii. All radii are equal to each other of a given circle, right? Both of these lines right here are radius, radii, right? Radius, this is, this is radii, right? Therefore, they have to be congruent because they're all radii. Boom, boom. And then you have reflexive property. There's your HL. Hey, proof done. Uh, write that up tonight for homework. All right. Okay, write this down, book of truth. This is corollary one, or just corollary to nine, nine one. If you have two tangents to a circle and they intersect, right, then their lengths are equal. So if PA and PB are tangents, then they have to be congruent to each other. Another really simple one to understand, like there's no confusion of this whatsoever. It's like, I have no idea what that theorem meant. No, this one I do. They have to be tangents and they also have to uh, start from the same given point. They both uh, emanate from point B there. P, why did I say B? Point E. The proof was like, you know, three steps and you're done. CP, CP, C one, like all high school proofs are. Well, that was pretty simple. So 9-1 says if you got a tangent, perpendicular. The corollary says that if you have two tangents that start from the same point, then those two tangents are congruent. And then one more theorem, or then we have vocabulary left, and we're done for this week. Vocabulary is a little weird. Seth is pondering on it right now. Seth, how are you so smart? Definitely. All right, we good? All right, the converse to 9 1 does exist. We're about to prove it. So here's the converse to 9 1. 9 1 says that if you have a tangent perpendicular, the converse would say if they are perpendicular, then it's got to be a tangent, okay? So here's the converse to 9, 1, not the converse to the, uh, the corollary. This is the converse to 9, 1. So if they are perpendicular, then line L has got to be a tangent. We're going to prove it the same way. We're going to do proof by contradiction. It's the easiest thing to do. So we're going to do a proof by contradiction. Okay. So proof by contradiction would say what? Next statement. Next statement. That's not tangent. We're going to say L is not tangent. Right, so we're going to assume by contradiction it's not tangent. That means it's a secant, right? It means it would go through the circle. If it's not tangent, remember tangent means the line touches one spot. Well, if it touches in more than one, that's two, right? It's a line, then it's a secant. Okay. So by contradiction, we're going to assume that L is not tangent. Thus, if it's not tangent, that means it's a secant. So how many places does it touch the circle? More than one. So there. It's going to be two, right? It can't be more. If it's curved, it can be more. Right. So where is that point that it touches by contradiction? It's not a tangent. It's a secant. Therefore, where's that other point? Well, I don't know, but there must it must exist somewhere on the line. Let's just say we'll call it Z, right? And if Z is a secant as well, or the second point of the secant, that means from Q to Z. Okay, here, Matt, you ready? Yes. It means this is a radius. This is the thing you got to wrap your head on proof by contradiction. It visually doesn't look like one, but if L is not a tangent, it means it touches it in two spots, it's a secant, then where's that point? Somewhere on this line, and it also touches the circle, right? It goes not through the it could, right? But it, it goes through at least two points on the circle. Okay, so we're going to say that QZ is a radius, okay? If QR is 
a radius and QZ is a radius. What kind of triangle did I just make? No, I made an isosceles triangle, right? So QZR triangle is an isosceles. What's the problem with that? You're, 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 you're stuck on proof by contradiction. If this one is 90 and this is congruent to that, then guess what that's equal to? And what's the problem with that? I know that, but what's the problem with that? You can't have two right angles. In a you can't have more than one right angles in a triangle. Therefore, there's our contradiction. Remember, proof by contradiction. You say proof by contradiction. You negate this, and you arrive at a contradiction, which is, wait a minute, you just made two right angles in a triangle, right? So that's a problem because therefore QZR must be 90 isosceles. Uh, third 4.1 says that uh, the sides opposite congruent side, the angles opposite congruent sides are, are, are congruent. Therefore, if that's 90, the other side's 90. And that, that ain't working. That dog don't hunt, right? All right. I have a problem with that statement because that's double negative. That means dog does hunt. All right. So there we go. We just proved it by contradiction QED. Another sweet proof. All right, write this down. This is the converse to 9, 1. It's 9, 2. And it says exactly just the converse of 9, 1. It says that if you have a line that is perpendicular at this point, then you got a tangent. Should I answer? Yes. Should I answer? I think I answered Jack Answer Japanese. Oh, yeah. He already hung up. Dang you. Oh, call him again. Yeah, call him back. He calls back. I'll let you answer, Jeff. All right. Scam likely. He's my favorite caller. What if it happens to me during class? Just, just find you. Just hold me. Oh, well, I just got one. So. It's probably the same one. It's your fault. Call my fault. Then it's lost. Chandler is scam likely. <laughs> You're the <laughs> most hated man in Campbell's. America. Wow, my parents hate <laughs> this. You're <laughs> from Campo, Colorado. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. It was the same exact call. They called my phone then. No, I, I have a whole string of calls from Campo, Colorado. I think this one. No, that was from Denver. But this one's from Campo. This one's Denver. I got Denver, Campo, Denver, Campo, Denver, Campo. Oh, so you're, so you're saying I might get Mansfield, more. Texas. Oh, yeah, Mike, Mike, you should get I think like the admin of the school hires Colorado. That would be Miss Emmons. I Miss mean, Newburn would be it's doing that. Myth, that or Miss Wilson. That's why you don't right. get teachers your phone number because when you use it, they'll think you're like miserable. Also, because it's illegal for a teacher to have a student's phone number. That is pretty so. weird. What do you mean illegal? What law? It's not, it's not illegal. It's just weird. I last what was it two years ago? I looked in the backyard of Matt's house really in class. Weird. You remember that? And you said so you can't do that. Oh yeah. And I said sure I can. You can do it to me as well too. Do what? Oh, wait, was if you know the person's the name, you just look it up on the internet and type it into Google and you can click satellite view and look in the backyard. <laughs> and Matt was like, oh, yeah, there's my chicken coop. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here we go. The rest of the class. I did the correct Oh, sorry. Thank you. The rest of the class are these definitions. They all got to go in your book of truth. They are, you've never heard of these before. They are, I will explain them to you, you will understand them, but sometimes if you're reading the book, it's in math speak, you might not understand it. So listen to math speak. Yeah, but math people love their language, right? And unfortunately, some students get lost in the language of it. I would, I would, I mean, because I had a math degree, I would say, oh, it's beautiful language, but until you get comfortable with that type of language, that's why sometimes it needs to be, I, I wish they would write better math books, but they don't. They, and it's because mass people write them. And like, well, no, we can't write. That'd be awesome. All right, here we go. So here come the definitions. Uh, from the last class, this isn't a new one, right? You don't need to write this one down. Uh, but Danny does, right? And Danny, I'm not going to pause here uh, for this one. We got to get some new stuff. But this is one of the words you'll be writing down. Uh, remember, inscribed talks about what the shape, outside or inside? The circles inside. The, whatever the shape is inside. So this is an inscribed circle. This is an inscribed circle, right? You're talking about the shape on the inside. The, the opposite of that is circumscribed. So you're talking about the shape on the outside. 
This is a triangle that circumscribes a circle. This is a kite. Uh, you haven't learned about kites yet. This is a kite that circumscribes a circle. Okay. Those are those two words. Uh, the but here is that I can use this shape right here and ask you either inscribe or circumscribe, either one. And you just got to be able in your mind or be able to flip through in your book of truth, uh, figure out what I'm talking about. I can use both of those words. And for those of you who are doing your homework, we're going to use both those words again today. All right, here comes the, the new stuff. And it says challenging. They're not challenging. They're just, it just needs to be explained to you. All right, here we go. In your book of truth, right? I got a line, yes? Uh, the previous section, we made a tangent. So what was the other shape we drew with the line? Okay, so there is a circle that is tangent, or the line is tangent to the circle, circle is tangent to the line. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Today we get a second circle. Do you see that? So we have a line that is tangent not to one circle, but to two or more circles. Hey, stay with me. I said challenging vocabulary. There is nothing challenging about the, the description or what I just drew. What's challenging is that this actually happens in two flavors. Okay, write this down, Book of Truth. Common tangents. This is a line that is tangent to two or more circles. Common tangent. Nothing hard about that. Until I tell you the two flavors, then it becomes hard. Common tangent. It's a line that is tangent to two or more circles. And if that's where it stopped, this wouldn't be challenging because that's not that challenging. What's challenging is that this uh, geometric uh, uh, figure can happen in two different ways. That's when it becomes challenging. And that'll be the next thing we write is two flavors. You okay? Yes? All right. So now we're going to talk about the two flavors of common tangents. All right, there are two different common tangents. You ready? I'm going to start off with the two circles. I'm not going to draw a tangent. I'm going to connect their centers. Okay, I'm going to take the two or more circles and I'm going to connect their centers. See what I did? Is this line a tangent? Clearly not, right? Right? You're going to put a circle in there. Well, here's what, I, no. You ready? The two flavors look like this. The first one looks like this. Hey, here's a line that touches the circles in one spot. The second type of common tangent, are you paying attention, Matt? Yes. No, you're not. The second one looks like the blue one. Okay. So each one of these, the red and the blue, get a different name. They're both common tangents, but they get different names. What's the difference between the red one and the blue one? The one crosses the blue one crosses. Notice the blue one crosses the line that goes between the two circles that connects their centers. Okay, that's the construction. These are the two flavors. Write this down. The one that crosses that center line is going to be called a common internal tangent. In other words, if you can think about what's between inside, between the two circles is this dotted line. And the common internal tangent crosses it. Right, pencil's moving. When you ask me on Monday, I didn't get any of that stuff because you didn't pay attention in class. The explanation is simple. Remember it, it might not be simple, but the explanation is simple. It looks like this. If I were to draw a line that connected the centers of two circles and I drew a tangent that crossed that line, we by definition call that a common internal tangent. I said two flavors. If this one's the common internal tangent, guess what the other one is called me going to be called? The other one is going to be called a common external tangent. So here is that picture. Notice the line that connects the two circle centers and the tangent do not intersect. This one is called the common external tangent. It's challenging only of the sense of you're not going to remember this. 
You're going to remember there's two of them, but you'll forget which each one means. Doesn't stick with you. If it's in your book of truth, you'll be fine. You'll just flip to it and you're like, okay, I got it. If you don't have this written down, there's no possible way of remembering this. I, I'll make that bet. Pride, I don't know. We got two left. What time we get out of here? Yes. 28.80. And you've got a couple more days left. Uh, 54. Oh, I got plenty of time. I'm good to go. No, wait, let me get All right. I thought I was running out of time. I got plenty of time to finish today's class. All right. Are we good with common internal, common external tangents? Yes. By the way, for both of these, it's a tangent. So guess what I just drew? Guess what I just drew? Right angles. Right? If it's a tangent, the radii make right angles at the point of tangency. All right. Tell me when you're good. All right. Here we go. Think about this. A tangent is a line that touches a circle at only one point. Okay? There are other shapes. Stay with me. There are other shapes that can also touch each other at one spot. The next vocabulary word describes that. Uh, if there's one that's more challenging than the previous one, it's the last one, this one. Write this down, Book of Truth. These are called tangent circles, no line involved. Tangent circles. These are two circles that are on the same plane that only touch each other in one spot. They do intersect, but only in one spot. You had two rings, look at me real quick. They could connect in how many spots? They could connect in two spots. These are the ones that only connect in one spot. These are called tangent circles. Sorry. Cope, they got to be on the same plane. You okay? Yeah. All right. These also come in two flavors. Here we go. You can connect two circles on the same plane and touch in one spot two different ways. If you, if you looked at the book, you already saw it. The first one is one, one I just demonstrated like that. Hey, they only touch in one spot. What's the other way I could draw this? All the way apart. Well, then they wouldn't touch. What's the other way of drawing those two circles where they only touch in one spot? What? And that's the second way. Okay. Both of these have a name. Maybe you want to take a guess? External. Tangent circles. One's going to be external, one's going to be internal. Take a pick. Which one's which? That one's definitely internal. What? This one's internal, that one's external. Yes, that's the guess? No. Other way? Okay. Luckily for you, write this down, Book of Truth. It does make sense. This one actually does. But you got to remember the names. What in the world do they have a line here for? Well, they had a line the last time. Okay. The line is like, well, it's part of the definition, but the reality is tangent circles whose tangent intersects in a line, and the line would be between the two circles. So in other words, if I put a line that intersected at that point of tangency, and that was tangent, right, the line would be between the two circles. The line thing doesn't add anything. It's just part of the definition, right? Hey, close the door. Thank you. Common, I'm sorry, externally tangent circles. Once again, it doesn't stick with you past maybe the minute that we're talking about right now. Maybe during the homework, right? How much more uh, A week from now, you're not going to remember this. We're going to get to the test day, and you're like, what? Which one was which? Okay. Uh, yeah, you won't do that anymore. Matt, we've already lost. You've already lost enough bets for all of us. What are you betting on that? No, I, said, I said we'll do the bet again for the test, next test. Yeah, that's not good. You lost our pizza bet. Get out of here. Okay, yeah, you just want to so that you didn't get to buy pizza. I All know, right. but it's better when the teacher buys Last pizza. one. Hey, it's our question. Clearly, the line still touches both circles in one spot, but this time the line is outside 
not between the two circles, it's outside. That's why this one is called an internal. Say again? What does what, what exist? We did. That was yesterday's class. Welcome to today's class. So, I mean, this exists in, it exists in, in humanity. Like we have plenty of constructions where you have a circle inside of a circle. Think about cradle. If you think of a padlock, right? The key goes right here. Yes, that's what's on the building. All right, the key goes right here. Yeah. You turn it. Now you build it. <laughs> All right, internally tangent. Now, the only issue with the internally tangent one is the, the line. This is probably why there some students get confused. The line is on the outside, the two circles, one is inside the other. That's, hey, stop. This is why it's called internally tangent circles. The line is, well, they had a line in the previous one. Let's throw it back in there. The line has nothing to do with the construction itself, nor on the previous one. It has nothing to do with the construction. It has something to do with the explanation of why it's true. Internally tangent circles. So let's see, we had um, common tangent, common internal, common external. And then we have internal tangent external tangent if you notice all four words have the word tangent in them two of the four four words have internally two of the four words have external two of them have common those four words can get really jumbled into your head which is why luckily for you you can put in your book of truth shame on you if you get these wrong come test day because it's in your book of truth and none of you are asking questions. You're like, okay, I get it. What's the big deal? There isn't a big deal. The big deal is you've got to remember the words to describe the picture. So if your book of truth doesn't have the picture and just the words, I'm going to claim you're going to get it wrong. So does your book of truth have this picture in it? Does your book of truth have that picture? Does your book of truth have... I don't have the ice That picture. And does your book of truth have... This picture, then you'll be fine. All right. Have a good weekend, except for Chandler. Chandler, may you struggle mightily with the homework. I already did it, so. No. I will not struggle. Can you find my house? Scrap. It's kind of creepy when somebody does it. I don't care. All you do is just Google, and then you pull up the uh, the map. Did you get a random spam call? Yes, yeah, I, I got so one.